Well, hello and welcome to today's Wealth Builders webinar. We are so excited to have all of you join us. I'm Karen Conrad Metcalf, and I'm Vice President of Wealth Builders here in the U.S. And we have Pastor Tafara and soon to be coming on Chippo that uh, is over our Africa Wealth Builders. And Pastor Tafara, do you want to say a quick hello? Hey, Karen. Uh, looking forward to tonight's program. Hey, everybody. Come on in and uh, welcome to Wealth Builders Africa. We are really in for a treat today. Pastor Tafar and Chippo are going to be talking about how to build generational wealth in Africa, or I think it's specifically how African families can build generational wealth. You know, we had such a great time, Pastor Tafar, when we were there last year, and I have great news for all of you. Wealth Builders Africa is coming back for a conference this July 11th through the 13th. And we want all of you to be there. Make plans to travel there. It's in Johannesburg. Uh, Billy and Becky are coming over. Dave and I, we're going to uh, potentially have some other speakers joining us with Pastor Tafar and Chippo. And we had such a great time last year. We can't wait to do this again this year. And then also, we are going to be launching a real estate workshop in October of this year. So we'll share a lot more details with that uh, with all of you when we come to the conference in July. And uh, those of you that are in Zimbabwe, we're going to hop over to Zimbabwe for a night as well. So I would love to hear where you are all tuning in from. And I just see this already. We've got Gilbert that's joining us. Hello, Gilbert, welcome. We've got, I think it's Shingy. I hope I said that right. We're so glad to have you. We've got Jonathan that's tuning in. We've got, oh great, Shingy is from England. We've got Elizabeth, welcome, so glad to have you. We've got Carmelita, welcome, so glad you joined us. We've got Charles from Cape Town. Uh, we've got uh, Zibanini, hopefully I pronounced that right, from Cape Town, also South Africa. And Jonathan is from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. We've got Mercy from Kenya. We are so glad to have all of you as a part of this. Do you know, as we go into these times and we look at the opportunities that are ahead, really talking about generational wealth is such an important topic. Uh, we've got Shanalo from South Africa. Welcome, Phyllis from California. So glad to have you. And uh, with this, one of the things that Billy and Becky have always had on their heart is that, oh, we've got Nathando. Thank you for joining us from Heidelberg, Western Cape. We've got Stefan from Lombards in Cape Town. This is amazing. By the way, when Dave and I come over there for Johannesburg, we're gonna hop up to Cape Town as well. We actually had a great time there last year. We just love being a part of, of all of your family and community. So this is great, Scott's from Johannesburg. Awesome. Uh, well, as we look at the opportunities that are ahead, we just really, Billy and Becky had in their heart Africa. And uh, my husband, Dave, is, has you know worked in Africa with leaders for, for years. So it is so near and dear to all of our heart, but there's so much opportunity there. And something too, when I was there, just shared with uh, Pastor Defar and Chippo, the heart for God in uh, Africa, like when we were there was just tangible. And it just really helped me see like, why is God highlighting South Africa and Africa? And I believe it has to do with your hearts for the Lord. And in this, during these times, um, you know, as we understand the importance of building wealth for our families, building wealth for purposes of the kingdom, we know that we want to bring in not just letting you know that God wants you to prosper, but Wealth Builders was created and Billy and Becky know that it's bringing the how to's. So how do we step out into wealth? And so that is what we are all about here. And uh, I'm so excited to introduce to you again, Pastor Defara and Chippa will be joining us. And then too, just a reminder, we're gonna save time at the end for questions. So just enter your questions in the chat section. Our amazing team that's actually in the same building with me today in the lower level is going to send those questions over and we'll get to as many of those as possible. So with that, Pastor Tafara, take it away. Oh, thank you so much, Karen, and uh, good evening to uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us. 
Man, I'm excited about uh, tonight's program because, you know, our God is a generational God. The Bible says in Proverbs uh, 13, verse 22, a good man lives an inheritance to his children's children. And I think that's, you know, great grandchildren. And uh, he says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And so we see uh, through reading that scripture that God's uh, uh, plan should uh, go beyond just uh, you and I and our existence. Our God is a generational God. That's why you would pass on uh, his covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, God's uh, dream didn't just die with one generation. He would make sure uh, that there is a transition from Moses to Joshua and Caleb, uh, and also from uh, David to Solomon, uh, and also from Elijah to Elisha, from uh, Jesus to the first 12, and ultimately to you and I. And so what we see, and this thing has been going for 2,000 years, and so what we see is that God's plan for us is... Uh, is uh, generational and God wants to just go, go beyond with you and I, our impact has to go beyond uh, just our existence. You know, uh, uh, in studying about this generational thing and, and you know, going beyond just our existence, uh, I learned that true legacy is what people uh, will feel or the impact that people will feel a uh, hundred years after we are gone, you know, a hundred years after you're gone, will they still be, you know, something that uh, you've contributed to your generation, to the, you know, uh, uh, to your children's children that will still uh, be of impact or it will die with you. God wants us to be able to live an inheritance, uh, impactful in inheritance, meaningful inheritance uh, to our children's children. So we're going to be looking at uh, some of those things that are going to help us, you know, uh, shift our thinking so we can start thinking, you know, multi-generationally. Uh, uh, an average uh, firm in Japan, an average company in Japan is built to last at least 300 years. And so when uh, people in Japan in their culture, you know, uh, uh, start things, uh, they start them with the mindset of at least letting it run uh, for not less than 300 years. And this is why if you look in history, the oldest uh, hotel uh, that still exists today uh, was started in AD 705 in Japan. And uh, it still exists even today, over 1,400 years later, it's been passed on from generation to generation. Some of our favorite car brand names are Honda, was started by Mr. Honda Hyundai, was started by Mr. Hyundai, passed on to the children. Uh, and even in the U.S., we have uh, Henry Ford start things and then pass them on uh, to the next generation. And so uh, we see that, uh, you know, where true impact goes beyond just uh, one generation. And so that's what we're going to be looking at uh, tonight. And uh, we're going to, you know, uh, show you some things, practical things that you can start to incorporate in your life. Uh, to make sure that, you know, we set up the next generation for maximum impact and uh, 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 that this impact will go on for generations to come. And so, uh, uh, you know, at Wealth Build, as we like to talk about, you know, making money uh, for making a difference. Uh, and so we, we, we like to uh, teach people on how to, to, to handle finances. And the reason is simple, is that, you know, finances are, are the number one reason why, uh, you know, uh, uh, people are in trouble. You know, I once did a survey while I was preaching at church and I asked uh, those who needed healing to raise their hands. We had about two, you know, hands raised and I asked those who needed, you know, a prayer for salvation. We only had about one. And so we led them to the Lord. And then when I asked who needed a little extra cash to do what God has called them to do, man, I'm telling you, hands went up all over the building and I could do the same on this coin. I'm telling you, we'll have every single hand raised. So money is uh, uh, very much a big part of what we do. Uh, it's a big part of, uh, you know, how we can uh, uh, impact people's lives. It's a big part of how we can improve our lives. I say the number one reason why people divorce is finances. And, and it didn't say you know, not having finances. It's just, you know, finances, either mishandling of finances, little money, sometimes too much money, you know, can cause problems when people are not taught how to handle uh, finances. And so this is the reason why at Wealth Builders, uh, we're dedicated to teaching and training uh, people to, to handle finances. And Chip and I just came back from a 
conference uh, in the U.S. And man, I'm telling you, it was powerful. And I'm I'm so excited to say we're going to be doing the same uh, conference here in uh, in Johannesburg. We're going to have Dave and Karen come out. We're going to have uh, Billy Epperhart, Miss Becky. They're going to come out, and we're going to uh, be here for three days. Uh, and man, I'm telling you, you're going to be empowered. You're going to get information that's going to help you learn how to uh, handle money and how to grow your finances and how to set your the next generation up for, for winning in this area uh, of finances. And so, you know, God's view for money, uh, you know, is is the most important thing we must adopt when we're handling finances. And, 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 and people have one of three uh, different views, worldviews, when it comes to, to handling finances. The first one is, you know, you could handle finances God's way. You could go uh, the Bible way, learn how to handle finances and how to handle uh, wealth uh, as prescribed in the Bible. And I'm telling you, that's a recipe for success that we get uh, from the Bible. Or we could do it our way, you know, which I do not highly uh, recommend. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter number 10, 23 or 23, 10, one of the two, you're going to go look it up. Uh, it says that it is not in man that walk to direct his own steps. And so whenever we try and do it in our, in our, in our own uh, effort, we'll try and figure it out. By ourselves, we we tend to mess it up. And uh, the third one is uh, it's, it's ten twenty three Jeremiah ten twenty three. So the first one was right. And the third uh, world view around money is you know to do it the world's way. And the world's way, I do not recommend. You know, in the world system, according to the world, you know you got to get money by all means necessary. You know, if you have to kill people, you you got to do it. In, and and that's not godly. You know, in fact. I heard someone wrote a book or I think it was a, a, a music album called Get Rich or Die Trying. No, 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 that's not what we, we're talking about. We're talking about building wealth uh, through God's way, God's system, and that wealth remains. This is why the scripture that we read uh, said that the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. And uh, 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 that's the opposite of how the world uh, uh, the world does it. In the world, you may get rich, but it comes with a whole lot of uh, sorrow. And so there are three things that we're going to share tonight that I believe are a big part of how we can create uh, lasting wealth. Uh, and not just lasting wealth, we can create wealth that will uh, go beyond our existence. It will go to the... Uh, next generation and the one, you know, coming after that and the one after that and so on and so forth. And so if you read the same scripture that I just read in Proverbs 13, 22 in the Amplified Bible, it says this, it says, a good man lives an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of of the righteous for whom it was laid up. And so, you know, this scripture was, uh, you know, emphasized uh, a, a, a lot uh, uh, in, in the 90s where, you know, I started hearing more and more preachers uh, preach this Bible verse, Proverbs 13, verse 22. And whenever they would read it, you know, I would skip to part B because I was, I was interested in part B. You know, part A, I felt like I still had time. You must understand I was in my 20s, right? So living an inheritance for my children's children wasn't a priority at the time. I felt like, man, I still got 50 years. We'll figure that out. You know, when I'm in my sixth inheritance, I can't be thinking about inheritance right now as a bachelor. And uh, I was, so I wasn't interested in the first part. And, and now I am interested, but... I'm talking about back then, I wasn't interested in the first part. I was interested in the in the part B, because part B says this, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And so when I read that, I got excited. And the next question was, I want to know where this wealth is laid up, because I need to get my hands on it. I mean, I, at the time, I had, I, had, I had bills on my bills. I mean, they were starting to charge bills on my bills. You know, it's called interest. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, uh, I was in 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 uh, dire stress financially, and so the wealth of the sinner laid up for the just. I needed to know where it was. Give me some GPS coordinates. I need to know what city it is in. I'm gonna get myself there. You don't have to worry about getting me there. I'm coming. I just needed to know, preacher. Please tell me where is this wealth laid up? And no one could. No one could tell me. No one could give me the GPS coordinates. No one could tell me. 
where this uh, wealth was laid up until I started, you know, uh, hanging around uh, uh, Dave and Karen Metcalf and Billy and, and Becky Epper. I started hanging around the wealth builders crowd, right? And I started learning that this wealth is laid up in what Billy Eppard calls transactional money. Listen, you got to write this down. Billy Eppard says this wealth of the sinner is laid up, it's everywhere, but it's laid up in what is called transactional money. And transactional money is different from devotional money. And the way Billy explained it to me was, and to us in, 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 in all these different conferences was, you know, a lot of Christians understand devotional money and devotional money is the tithe. It's the money that we give to the Lord. And uh, sometimes devotional money is money that people bring to us in offerings and they, you know, bless us with 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 money. And, and Billy said this, he said that devotional money is not going to change your life. You know, it's not going to because, uh, you know, sinners are not bringing any devotional money. Right. But this wealth that's laid up for us. Uh, uh, the wealth of the sinner that's laid up for us is laid up in the marketplace in what is called transactional money. And so what he taught us was we have to create an opportunity uh, for transactional money to start to flow into our lives. And, uh, you know, uh, examples of transactional money is when you get into real estate. And I'm glad to say in July, we're going to be talking about real estate. And not only that, we're planning to have a follow-up real estate conference that's going to help you understand how to get in the game and how you can start you know, buying real estate, how you can get in for rental income, which will come to you transactionally, and you can expect that to come. And sometimes you can get you know, sinners uh, renting your property, and that way this, the wealth of the sinner that's laid up for the just will start to find its way eventually into your hands through a, a, a real estate uh, uh, opportunity that you'd have created. Uh, I remember, you know, many years ago, uh, uh, Chip and I had, uh, we have a rental property that was on the market at the time. And uh, we had a guy who was not a believer from Iran, you know, uh, reach out and they wanted to rent our property. And uh, we ended up giving it to them, having done all our checks and so on and so forth. And we ended up giving it to them and they rented that from us, never missed a month. And they were not a believer, but they paid rent, you know, consistently for over four years. And that wealth uh, of the sinner that was laid up in their account found its way into the hands of the just and we were able to use it, uh, you know, for, for the kingdom of God and for kingdom purposes. And so transactional money, uh, when you sell real estate, you your capital gains on that real estate, that's transactional money coming to you when you have investments and they pay out dividends. That's transactional money uh, that's coming to you when you own a business and you have sales. Uh, that's transactional money that's coming to you. And Christians have to learn to differentiate between transactional money and devotional money. And, and God has given you a calling on your life. And sometimes what I see in church is we have people uh, charging devotionally on, on their calling because they're trying to be Christian. But God never meant for you to do any of that. That's on you. You know, we have one young uh, lady in our church. She's gifted in um, crafts. And every time she comes to church to, you know, uh, people want to buy her crafts and things of that nature. And when people ask her what the price is, she say, you know, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Now, that's not transactional money. Imagine having a, a Starbucks, uh, you know, a store, or a, a, a McDonald's or in the U.S., uh, a Chick-fil-A franchise, and then when people come to buy burgers, you say, man, just pay me whatever the Lord, the Lord puts on your heart. Man, you're going you're gonna to run that thing down. And so I say this to say, when it comes to transactional money, we need to understand value. Remember, what we learn as well at Wealth Builders is that you don't bring time into the marketplace. Some do bring time, but it limits you. But you bring value. When you bring value and you know the the, the, the uh, price at, that is to be attached to your value, then you can start to charge uh, transactionally. And so the Lord, you know, the things that he has given you, man, uh, uh, he has, he has, they're precious and uh, he has given them to you as uh, opportunities to go into the marketplace so that you can, you can uh, start charging transactionally. You know, you know, me being a pastor, you know, I get people to do stuff for me. Sometimes people I know and they know I'm a pastor. And when they come and do fix some stuff at my house and ask them how much, 
uh, you know, they try to give me devotional uh, prizes. And I tell the man, if that's how you're running this business, you're going to run it down. So we got to understand a transactional money. We and, and, and once we get in the game, you know, we are able to uh, uh, really maximize on the opportunities that God gives us. I, I had to learn this, you know, because sometimes on some of our rental properties, I'd forget to increase the rent. You're supposed to increase the rent annually. Uh, and, you know, wealth builders, again, you can come and learn the formulas of how you can determine what your rent increase is and uh, and should be. And uh, according to inflation, and there are several equations that we will give you that will help you uh, not take advantage of people. That's not what God wants us to do, but to, you know, be able to also maximize on the things that God has given us so that we are good stewards of the things that God has given us. And so sometimes I'll forget to increase the rent. You know, you're supposed to do that annually. And then I'll be like, you know, kicking myself three years later, man, I haven't increased rent. And it's been, you know, the, and, 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 and sometimes I always realize when the property is, is on the, a uh, 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 verge of making a loss or just breaking even. And, and then, uh, man, I've got to do this. And, and But when you understand transactional money, you're able to handle uh, all these things uh, well. And so that's our first point is that the blessing of the Lord uh, uh, will, will enable you and I to become rich. It will enable us to live an inheritance for our children's children. Uh, and it will also enable us to get a hold of that uh, wealth of the sinner that is laid up for the just. It will, it's not going to come to you in the prayer closet. Oh man, I hate to be the one to burst your bubble. I love prayer and I pray a lot. I spend time in devotion and I, I fast, you know, uh, um, from, from stuff, you know, fast from sugar, from donuts, and sometimes fast from food and all of that is great. But, but the way we allow money to flow into our lives is through creating transactional uh, opportunities. And again, I keep uh, uh, referring you to the conference that's coming because we're going to go in, get into great detail. Uh, you're going to sit with people. You're going to have an opportunity to talk to uh, Karen, uh, Dave, one-on-one -on -one in some of our smaller uh, workshops. You're going to get an opportunity to really plug in and get the how-tos. That's what we like to teach at World Builders, how-tos. You're going to get the how-tos. You're going to get the the bolts and nuts of how to do this thing. And as you start to do it, man, you get in the groove, you get in the flow, uh, transactional money, the wealth of the sinner will, will start to find its way uh, towards you. And the second you know, principle I want to learn. So the first one was that the blessing, we got to cooperate with the blessing so we can create transactions. The second one is, you know, uh, uh, the Bible talks about a diligent soul. You know, so the first is the blessing. The second one is the diligent soul. And it says in Proverbs 22, verse 29, see a man that is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings and shall not stand before mere men. And so diligence is, is key if we are going to create generational wealth. Now, the word diligent in the English dictionary means constant in effort to accomplish something. And sometimes that's, that's a word that's missing on our wealth building journey, consistency and uh, a constant effort, right? Uh, consistency and a constant effort is very, very, very important, you know, that we, we uh, uh, are consistent in our wealth building journey. You know, uh, I'm a pastor and so I get to interact with people and <laughs> all kinds of things happen, man. And one of the things we like uh, and I've, I've, I've observed is that Christians get, in fact, at church, we get a, 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 a great attendance in January because it's a month where people like to reset. And man, I've, I've watched some people reset every year. You know, they keep resetting. They keep resetting and it's a, it's a sign for a lack of diligence. You know, when you become diligent, you're not just looking at, you know, your year in, 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 in uh, months, in, 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 in segments of months. You're looking at your year as one long, continuous effort from what you've already been doing last year. You know, if you talk to fitness people, they'll tell you the journey of fitness is at least 15 years. You know, you, you, you get on it and you don't stop. And similarly, when we get on the wealth building, you know, journey, 
uh, we have to be diligent. It says, you know, see a man that is diligent in his business. Diligence also means hard work. Uh, but 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 here's the deal, guys, is that sometimes in 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 2024, the, the way you define hard work from when we defined it in 1985 is different, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes you get on the computer and that's hard work and you're doing, you know, work on the computer. Sometimes you, you have to be creative and that's hard work. Think outside the box. That's hard work. You have to uh, uh, be strategic with your business to take it in a certain direction. That's hard work. That's why it's a different meaning of that word, you know, uh, hard work, but with that hard work, whatever it is for you, you've got to be constant in effort, number one, and number two, you've got to be constant and consistent on your wealth building journey. You have to start and not stop. So if you decide, you know, the Lord shows you uh, real estate is where you should be, man, you get on that real estate journey, uh, it's going to be hard. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. You know, all good things are upstream. You get to swim upstream, you know, and uh, you get to enjoy all good things. And so it's going to be hard. Uh, you may have to uh, uh, use your iPhone for an extra two years, you know, and uh, not get into debt to update it because they've just changed the last number of the same iPhone, you know. You may have to watch your debt. You may have to watch your consumer debt and become a little bit more disciplined, all of that is diligence. You know, a man who's diligent in business long term, uh, it says he will stand before kings and not just mere man. And so diligence means constant in effort. It also means attentive and persistent in doing something. So you've got to be you've got to pay attention. You've got to pay attention to the detail. And this is why, you know, hanging around this thing, man, I, I've got to commend you for being a part of this. A webinar and not just one month. Some of you have been a part of this for the last, you know, 12 months. Congratulations. Kudos to you. Get with the right crowd. The Bible says he who walks with the wise will himself become wise. Get with the wise. Get with people who understand finances. Get with people who've uh, 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 walked the journey and they're ahead of you and, and be attentive when they speak. You know, when I get around Wealth builders and uh, some of our coaches, man, I listen, you know, I listen. And uh, it's all part of diligence. When you listen and you apply it, it's all part of diligence. Be energetic. That's all diligence. Uh, industrious, unrelenting, and not quitting. You know, you have to have the ability to take a licking and uh, and keep on ticking. Now, that that's a rhyme. Uh, that was good. She, my wife is here. She's she's smiling. She's saying, you're doing a good job. And so I might just get uh, a, a great offering after this. <laughs> and so diligence is very important, guys. Diligence is very important. Um, um, uh, you know, it's, it's not all going to be given to us on a uh, silver platter. Why? Because there's an enemy that's coming against us. Whenever God gives you a dream, a vision, you know, Satan tries to stop you in your tracks. And so uh, he will send distractions. He will send, you know, other things just to get you distracted. And, and um, you know, I had an addiction for, for, for uh, can y'all keep a secret? I'm about to reveal a secret to y'all. I had an addiction for shoes, for sneakers, you know. Uh, uh, I used to like nice sneakers. And the reason was, before you judge me, the reason was because, you know, growing up, we I grew up in a in a poor home and uh, never wore uh, brand new shoes until I was about twenty one, and so it was the first time I ever wore brand new shoes. And so I had I, I had some catching up to do, but it became a bad financial habit. You know, I had to get the new Michael Jordan shoes. I had to get this, that, and the other, and uh, because of that. Uh, I would start on the journey of wealth building in real estate. And sometimes I would stop because I'm trying to, you know, um, uh, uh, get my uh, sneaker addiction, you know, um, satisfied. And uh, it, it was a distraction. And so, uh, you know, I realized, thank God, the Lord showed it to me that it was a distraction. And I've 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 since you know quit. I, I you know I I don't. I mean I, I mean I still buy once every uh, three years. You know, and I spare, but you know I don't buy every month. You know I don't have fifty shoes somewhere. I don't need fifty shoes. 
you know, I, I'm more focused now. Why? Because the diligent soul, diligent soul, someone who's diligent in his business shall stand uh, before great kings. And so I'm going to end with this one. Uh, the last one is a diligent, a, a, a generous soul, a generous soul, a generous soul will, will, will enjoy prosperity. The Bible says uh, in Proverbs uh, chapter number three, let's go to Proverbs. Uh, chapter number three, and I'm going to read from verse nine. Proverbs chapter number three, uh, verse number nine. Proverbs uh, chapter number three, verse nine. I'm using uh, this iPad and it's freezing on me. and uh, But I'll find Proverbs. I just need to restart it. <laughs> uh, uh, Proverbs chapter number three, uh, verse nine. Pardon, I beg your pardon. Verse 9, uh, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and uh, with the best part of everything you produce. Then you will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow uh, with, with good wine. And then if you also go to uh, Proverbs, uh, uh, if you go to Proverbs, Chapter number 11 from verse 24 to 25, it says the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but the blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. And so in this verse, we see generosity, but we also see transactional uh, money as well. But I like what it says in uh, Proverbs 11 uh, verse you know, 25 to 26, if you read uh, verse 24, it says, there is he who scatters, yet he increases, uh, but there is he who withholds more than his meat, and it leads to poverty. And then he uh, makes this conclusion, a generous soul shall be made prosperous, shall be made fat. And so one of the things we have to do is to cultivate our generosity uh, in, in our thinking. Uh, generosity, God gave it to us as a way to, to trick our thinking into abundance. That's, that's the best way I can put it. Uh, when when you when you give away something, you can actually trick your mind into thinking generosity, and you can get yourself delivered from what I like to call scarcity, uh, a scarcity mindset, a scarcity mindset that thinks things are running out, uh, that thinks that there is not enough for everybody. Uh, that's that's not true. You know, the world wants us to believe that there is not enough for everybody. In fact, economics, one of the definitions for economics in universities is this, is that economics is the study of um, scarce resources. But God never created this thing to be in scarcity. God actually created it to be in abundance. Uh, and uh, just give you an example. It doesn't matter how hard you breathe or how fast you breathe. I'm still going to get mine because there is enough oxygen for everybody. So it is with resources. So it is with money. There is enough uh, for everybody. Yeah, the reason it's, it's, it's not in, in our hands sometimes is because we are thinking scarcity. We, we're thinking uh, stuff is running out. And the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so when you think scarce, when you think limitation, when you uh, think stuff is running out, uh, it becomes a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, and so what's the antidote for that? The antidote for that is to be generous. You know, the number one reason why people don't give is because they think they don't have. And as a man thinks in his heart, so he is, is he. If you think you don't have, you're right. And you won't have. But um, uh, uh, how do you trick that? You trick your mind by, uh, uh, when you give, you're tricking your mind by telling yourself there is more uh, where this came from. And so I have enough to give it away. And And sometimes when you do that, it, it changes your perspective on life and you, you start to open doors of opportunity. They just start coming to you and they start, you know, things start to find you. And, and, and quite frankly, this, this was a game changer for, for Chipo and I, once we realized this, I mean, it changed our lives and, and we've been privileged by the Lord to be able to, you know, bless people with, uh, uh, cars. We've been privileged to bless people with finances, with school fees. We've been privileged to bless people with all kinds of uh, things. And every time we do that, we get excited because it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. It is more blessed because it's 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 ministering to me. It's it's saying something to me. It works on my thinking. 
and it puts me on, on a path of abundance. And once you start thinking abundance, nothing can stop the flow of stuff to you. Listen, we get things given to us all the time, and sometimes the blessing of the Lord, man, it just uh, uh, um, just overflows in our direction. It starts to get embarrassing because of the goodness of God. And the reason is because, you know, uh, uh, a generous soul shall be made uh, fat. And so the scripture on generous, on diligence, uh, was uh, Proverbs 22, verse 29. And so I'm going to stop uh, right here, and I'm going to turn it over back to Karen. Uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, answer some of the questions and uh, and also pray for you guys. But thank you. Uh, over to you, Karen. Uh, thank you, Pastor Defaro. That was amazing and so encouraging, which you always are. I love hearing you share and teach. So we do have some really good questions. Um, and so before we dive into that, I do want to remind everybody, the date of the event coming up is July 11th through the 13th and the team's going to go ahead and put that information in the chat for you uh invite your friends bring your kids uh like this is a to me it's a life-changing event just because you know we had to learn ourselves what god had in mind for us for prosperity and know how to walk it out and that's what this is all about so that we are able to pass on generational wealth but also make a difference for the kingdom Okay, here we go. I this is a great question, Pastor Tafar. This is from I'm going to pronounce it Shingi. Hopefully, that's the right way to pronounce a name. Uh, listen to this. She says, "So, are parents the ones that are supposed to leave inheritance for their children, and not vice versa?" I ask because of the black tax issue, where children are somehow manipulated or threatened that they will not prosper unless they look after their parents. Please shed some light here. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, Isn't it? Because, you know, most of us come from that background where we have to look after our parents. Uh, you know, um, there, there are so many things uh, that we are supposed to do that the scripture tells us we have an opportunity to experience. And But sometimes we, we miss out on those things. And sometimes our parents you know, uh, didn't get the opportunity to be a part of a uh, wealth builders webinar to hear this truth, right? And and some of them grew up in, in Christian religions where they were told it was blessed to be poor. It was uh, spiritual rather to be poor. And uh, so they, they didn't create wealth and uh, that stronghold stayed with them. And now we have to look after them as children. And I, don't, I think we should do it with joy. Uh, we are the generation that, that have, uh, receive this revelation and uh, I believe that we can uh, look after them of course not to be manipulated uh, but the Bible really promises so many great things when we honor our parents and part of honor is to honor with substance and so you don't honor with lip service you honor with substance and so I, I think it's a privilege that you get to have parents who are alive that you can bless and spoil I think it's a privilege uh, but I think beyond that, we can be that generation that will put a full stop to our children, you know, looking at being a burden on our children and put a capital letter on being uh, the ones that are going to leave uh, an inheritance that will not just be for them, but for uh, our grandkids and our great grandkids, too. And so there is a balance, I believe, uh, to it that uh, we still have a, a responsibility that should we should execute with joy. And uh, uh, I think it honors God when we look after our parents with the right attitude. Um, mm. I don't think we should do it begrudgingly. And uh, uh, I think it's a privilege. I don't look at it as an obligation uh, because you know some of our parents are in their latter years and you know we only have a few years to spoil them. And so I, I think, you know, uh, with the Lord's help, if we open our hearts for abundance, we'll be able to do that, buy them cars, build them houses, and just, you know, spoil them for the little time they still have here on the earth. That's really good. And I really do like that scripture that we're a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And uh, I like how you, you know, kind of develop that response to far too, because not everybody has had the training that we have, but once we know it, like I know for Dave and I, like this is big, like we're committed. We are going to do what God says to do. And thankfully I've got a dad that did that too. 
and there's other ways that we take care of our parents and things, but just think about the impact if we do this for our kids and maybe we're the first generation and a lot of us are like we're looking at changing things for generations to come and this is one of those things as we teach and train our children in building wealth we can know that our legacy right is going to last um for generations so that's awesome really awesome my dad is 93 and uh Financially, he is, you know, he's been diligent with things. I mean, not over the top or anything, but there are things like we can bless him with and take care of him outside of finances. That's so important. All right. We are getting great questions. Listen to this. This is from Carmelita. Carmelita says, I need to get my hands on that as well. That's when you were sharing about, I need to get my hands on that wealth. Where is it? She thought that was so good. Uh, but she's wondering, is real estate the only way to generate transactional wealth? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you, Karen, take that one, because I think, you know, uh, we have several uh, workshops that we do that reveal other uh, ways in which yeah. we can create transactional money. So maybe you can share light on that Absolutely. as well. Yeah, so there's the good news is there's not 40 ways you have to figure out to to build wealth there's like seven or eight that billy shares but the most common ones would be real estate of course uh, but also business business is a great way to build transactional wealth there's also royalties um you know you can uh with investments in the stock market if you know what you're doing that can build transactional wealth so there is a lot of different ways to do it and we do teach on business as well. We actually have a coaching program in business. Um, we all have businesses in addition to our real estate. They actually complement each other really well. So um, hopefully that answers your question and um, we'll be providing more information on that, of course, at the conference and other webinars. If you go back, we've definitely talked about that. All right, so uh, Gilbert has a great, great question. How do you measure diligence? Is there a yardstick or formula for it? Is it especially financially for diligence? Yeah, I think uh, you measure it against your own uh, personal goals and objectives. And so, you know, again, you know, I keep going back to our workshops and to our, you know, conference and our seminar, because when you come out there, you're going to get... Uh, taught and trained how to make uh, five-year financial plans, 10-year financial plans. And once you make that plan, based off of the income that you are at and um, uh, you get on that triple uh, X journey, uh, you can measure yourself to see how well you are doing in terms of uh, crossing the first X, which is paying off your debt, uh, and also investment so that you can cross the second X, which is financial freedom. And the third X, uh, when you become, uh, when you start, you know, really changing nations and cities with the finances that God would have entrusted uh, you to. And so, uh, uh, you know, again, keep attending these workshops, uh, go, go on our websites, make sure you uh, subscribe to our podcast because, uh, one of the uh, teachings that Dave does, Dave Metcalf, is that he's going to show you how to set financial goals. And once you set those financial goals, you'll be able to measure yourself every year to see how you are doing and the percentage that you are, you know, uh, what kind of ground you are making along uh, those lines. And so don't put yourself under pressure, you know, on diligence. It's kind of like going to the gym, you know, uh, 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 Chip and I just go a minimum of three times a week. And sometimes we miss out on the three times a week because of travel or other things happening. But, you know, the general rule is three times a week, we will do something. We will have some sort of workout. And sometimes it goes all the way up to five and six and so on and so forth. But um, uh, that's that's how you measure diligence. That's really good. Consistency really is important. Um, so <clears throat> that's like one of my pastor's uh when i just first got born again filled with the holy ghost he would say if you don't quit you win and i really like that because it's like you know what maybe i'm not seeing results after working out three times but if i don't quit i'm gonna win maybe i'm you know trying to get through this business thing and i i hit a roadblock and it's tough if you don't quit you win so um i think a lot of people quit and give up or think that 
if they run into some challenges, uh, that it wasn't God's will, you know, that type of thing. Billy teaches about that a lot. That's awesome. Okay, Namagugu, I hope I pronounced that right, says, where do you draw the line between volunteering regards to in regards to bringing time to the marketplace and bringing value to the marketplace? Where do you draw the line with volunteering? Yeah, so I think as long as it's clear in your mind that this is devotional and it's to the Lord and you don't blur the lines, uh, then you are in, in the clear. You know, sometimes people start a business that's meant to be a transactional uh, business and then they bring devotional values and it just messes up the flow of the wealth that God is trying to bring uh, to you. You know, again, the classic example is opening up a restaurant and not putting prizes on it and just say, you know, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, uh, it, it might not turn out great. And so as long as you are clear in your heart that this is voluntary, which I think you should, you know, it's a part of the generous soul, um, you know, uh, and then there's a part where it's a marketplace and you are going in to uh, build wealth. That's really good. And I think um, having a generous heart with which all of you have, I think we sometimes put ourselves under obligation. No, if they ask for this, I have to do it for free. And that can actually start to build, um, you know, like bitterness or like resentfulness. And when we do it outside of the Lord is not always telling us to give everything away. So I think that's where, you know, the word of God tells us that we do it with a happy heart also but it we give where we're led to give or how we're led to give um so if someone's it, it it feels like someone's putting a demand on it that is not how we are to give we're to give out of a cheerful heart where we're led so i know over the years um i've really had to watch that because i'll get in and i love to help people but all at once if i'm helping people and i'm not getting my financial needs met um, I need to go to the Lord, like, am I supposed to be doing this? Or like, what, where is the line? Or maybe I'm neglecting my family. Um, so I think that is such a good question and something we all deal with. I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but uh, that's awesome, Tafara, thank you. So Irene is wondering, is there a recommended ratio of how you should spend versus save as we work towards creating this generational wealth? Yeah, the general rule, you know, again, it's in uh, uh, money mastery yeah. is that you live off of, you can start off living off of the 80% of uh, what you make. And then the 10% is devotional, right? You give it to the Lord, honor the Lord with the first fruit of your increase. But then the other 10% that you remain with, you split it up in half. That's what we learned. You 5%, you invest it professionally. Uh, whatever that looks like in your in your context and it's it's i think it's a great place to be uh as well because the other five percent you 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 invest yourself you start to learn how to uh invest and the reason i say it's a great place to be uh is then you can ask the holy spirit to show you what you should invest in and uh, how you should go about it and i think it's fun it really is fun when he begins to show you some stuff uh, that's to come. You can invest in things that will really uh, help you build wealth. And so as you grow your wealth, you can move to living off of 70% and investing 20%, 10 professionally, 10 yourself, you invest yourself, and then you can move to living off of 50. And so the idea is to keep growing and reducing your living uh, expenses so that you can increase uh, the uh, amount of income that you uh, put towards your investment so that you could start there and start increasing. Um, uh, that's what we learn in on the journey of uh, building wealth. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right. This is from Wanganga. And the question is, thank you for making this meeting happen. Uh, I am a Ugandan and trying to make a business work is hard because of the laws and the unfair leadership. Hence, leaving generational wealth is harder. How does one deal with this? Should one look at investing outside of the country? Yeah, I think uh, we are privileged because we have a relationship with God and God is on our side. And with God, all things are possible. And uh, again, when, whenever we find ourselves in a difficult environment, an unfair environment, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to just lean in and um, 
you know, ask the Holy Spirit how to navigate those situations. Uh, I'm originally from Zimbabwe, and uh, it's uh, pretty much similar to what we have in uh, Uganda. And I've, I've had some friends, uh, you know, make it by listening to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit shows them something new, something different. Uh, I had a friend who, uh, you know, just started a business in the media space and and uh, it just took off and grew and uh, it was supposed to be a side hustle it became his main you know a, a business and he quit his job just to focus on that and and uh, I've seen people start uh, businesses on the internet the world has become a global village and so the good news is you can st sell your services to someone sitting in New York right now you can sell your services to someone sitting in uh, a different continent. I've bought things from uh, guys sitting in Pakistan. I've bought things from people sitting in China. And the world has just become such a uh, connected, you know, a neighborhood or village. And, and so there is, if, if I believe if you ask the Holy Spirit, he will show you uh, how to just go beyond your own economy in your backyard and to start looking beyond and uh, create uh, income you know, beyond the difficulties of your immediate environment. Yeah, that's awesome. Pastor Tafara, thank you. I totally agree with that. Even we have so much opportunity here um, compared to a lot of countries in the U.S., but we still hit problems like whether it's governmental limitations, um, you know, economic limitations. I mean, there's there's a lot of things like even with real estate, with with lending restrictions and um we just uh, had, we hit something that seemed impossible. And I was kind of at that wall, like, I don't know what we're going to do. So I just started praying in the spirit. I was like, you know, Lord, I just don't have the capability up here to figure this out, but you know, and it was like a supernatural answer came. It was absolutely incredible. Not anything I could have in myself thought of. So I really think that that is available everywhere we go so that's part of like walking in faith like lord i know you've called me here this is where i live i'm not here by accident i'm seeing all these obstacles and possibilities but you are the god of the impossible and then in that that's really accessing that wisdom and billy says we get knowledge which is what you're doing here you're getting knowledge which leads to understanding. So when you're able to apply it in the how to's that we're talking about then when you receive wisdom from god then you're actually able to walk it out in a way to benefit from it. So that's awesome. This is from uh, Zibonini, Zibonini, I hope I said that right. Uh, in terms of transactional money, what would you advise as a starting point amongst the three you have given as examples? One, real estate, two, investment, and three, owning a business. Yeah, again, we go back to what you just said, Karen, that uh, this, this, so, so this, uh, is going to come out of, you know, you spending time with, with the Lord, spending time uh, with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, and also attending, uh, you know, business uh, webinars and, and uh, attending conferences and just being around people that are already doing stuff and, you know, connecting with people. We get our ideas from others. We, uh, as we lean in and hear what other people are doing, we get to be informed of what's happening and, and so it's just not, it's just being attentive. Part of being diligent as well is being attentive and paying attention to what kind of problems can I solve around me? Uh, we have a guy in our church. Uh, he started uh, his real estate business, just providing um, uh, accommodation for, you know, one, one bedroom accommodation for university students. And he's since found some investors and now they're building blocks and blocks of, uh, accommodation for university students in Zambia and uh, he is from Ireland and uh, so you know the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him uh, go to Southern Africa and he started small everything with God will start small we do not despise the days of small beginnings uh, the Lord delights in seeing the work begin that's what the Bible says God gets excited just seeing something begins just seeing if you go and read it actually it says God just gets excited seeing the worker leave the house with a, with a spirit level. That's what we call it here in Africa. It's a, it's a measuring tool, right? It's, the Lord doesn't, before you even lay one brick, God just gets excited seeing you leave the house with that tool that you use to measure. 
And uh, so I'm telling you, God gets excited just you being on this webinar and, and saying, man, I, I've got to do something with my life. And I've got to do something to build wealth so, I, so that I can live an inheritance for his children's children. And as you spend time with him, spend time with others, you start to, you know, find your space. And um, uh, uh, I was going to say, you know, find uh, one, the, 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 the easiest of the three. And then the Lord rebuked me before I said it. And, and he said to me, Tafara, I like hard. I like difficult. And I'll be <laughs> able to do it. Them. And so I didn't say that. I'm glad I didn't, you know. Just find out what the Lord wants you to do and he'll do it through you. For with God, nothing is impossible. That is so awesome. All right, we have time just for one more question. This has just been amazing. Thanks to all of you on here that are asking these great questions. We're all learning from you. So this is George. He said he's in healthcare. He's a healthcare professional and he offers basic primary health care to the community that he serves. And sometimes he attends a client and they clear the bills or in other words, they don't pay him. How do I go about that? Should I be strict in payments on delivery of service or how do I handle that? Isn't that a great question? Man, it's such a great question to ask a pastor. I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to balance my pastoral responsibilities with my marketplace <laughs> assignment right now. <laughs> I think so I think funny. I think it's being a good steward to, um, you know, uh, follow up and, uh, you know, also be, be listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit may have you write <laughs> off some of it. It's happened to me before where we write stuff off. But, um, you know, man, that's such a hard question. That is a hard question. I think... Um... You know, I think people like should pay their bills, right? And I guess some of it is just figuring out um, like what if you're going backwards, right? I don't think God intends for us to go backwards, but I think there are times that God will put on our heart to maybe help someone and it's sort of discerning that. But what I don't think would be good is if somebody has the ability to pay and they just choose not to. Um, so I don't know, but... <laughs> it's a great question i guess i would say if somebody didn't pay me rent um i would expect them to pay me rent so that would be a service or if i did you know some services for people i would definitely expect them to pay no one is willing to not let me pay right and i don't want to not pay uh but there may be times just out of compassion that something is just not, uh, you know, wasn't something they planned on or they have no options. And if in your heart is to help them, I think it's just a discernment personally. Oh, I don't know how good that is. That's so amazing. That's a, that's a great answer. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I think that it could just be different in different ways. But we don't want to be manipulated by somebody. Like something's happening in the U.S. People are just going in and they're taking stuff and and the the police can't even do it that's wrong that's absolutely wrong that's a very different situation where someone has a heart to come in and just take advantage of you and not pay uh on purpose but then there's another situation if they're in a bad situation and your heart goes out to them with compassion and you get a green light then i think that's awesome that that you that you would in those situations i actually have a business idea with that that i was thinking about as we're talking i don't have time to share but um they, just real quick one of the businesses we're talking about runs into this as well they want to help people but they don't want everybody to expect it for free so what we did is we came up with a system where you would ask questions ahead of time to determine that and then if you had capacity, let's say you said, I'll do 10% of my services for free, then you could discern and make a decision who would fit into that, basically that nonprofit part. And then you would choose the rest of your business to be. So then it, you're planning on helping people, but they're not just taking advantage of you. You are actually putting together the criteria as to which you would provide those services for free. So uh, maybe just think about that as well. Hey, you know, Pastor Tafara, I just thought of something in team. If you would put this up, we've got a Wealth Builders Boot Camp coming up March 8th, the week of March 18th. 
and it is completely free and it is five days of teaching. So I, if you guys are like, hey, I wanna go in deeper with this, it's a phenomenal week. So you can register that completely free and join us. It's at 4 p.m. Um, mountain. So I don't know, like that could be a crazy time in, in Africa, but we'll send you the replay of that. So get registered for that if this has been interesting for you and you want to go in deeper. All right, Pastor Tafara, will you pray for us as we close this webinar out? Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every single one of your children that's on this webinar. Lord, we thank you that as we all uh, are at different levels of wealth building, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, give us strength. Uh, give us your grace uh, for insight, your grace for creativity, your grace uh, to, to have answers, your grace for wisdom as we navigate the marketplace. Uh, Lord, we just pray for your favor uh, uh, to surround every single one of your children that's on this call. Uh, those that may have answered that uh, uh, we did not provide. Lord, I just pray, Father, Holy Spirit, that you may uh, minister to them, uh, bring them to their hearts, to some in the night seasons, by way of a dream, by way of insight, by way of revelation to some, you know, uh, just uh, uh, meeting with someone that will give them wise counsel. We just thank you, Father. Uh, that you, you, those that are in uh, territories where it's hard to break the ground and to do business, where the barriers of entry are high, we we know you are a god of, of of the impossibility. You you know how to turn impossible into possible, and so we pray that you may work through them and just show yourself strong through them, and that uh, uh, in the end we will all look and say, surely it was the Lord's doing; it was not their strength. And we thank you, Father, and we give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tafara. Thanks, all of you, part of our uh, Wealth Builders Africa family. God bless you and have an amazing rest of your evening. Good night, everybody. Good night.